Again, my goal is always to put in the work ahead of time and then during sit back a little bit. Um, and then, you know, usually I'm grading for my other class while I'm, while I'm doing something like this in the room uh, in advance of collecting papers from the group doing the projects. Um, so the first thing I do in my planning is I start with the texts and topics that I know I'll be teaching, whether those are things I chose or as in the examples that I showed you um, in the small units, things that are thrust upon me um, that I may or may not like, but eventually figure out what I want to do and, and enjoy them. Um, the other part of it is, you know, what are the skills and practices that these texts are going to enable? So what, what are the things that are um, extractable from this text? Sure, you should know the name Thucydides and generally when he lived, but, but what specifically does this allow us to develop in our own writing and thinking? Um, from there, usually then I just write down what those things are. Um, you might attach them to the TEKS. Um, I always attach them to the liberal arts general education requirements. Um, and then I start to think, okay, how many days do I have? That's always important. Um, and then what are my local angles? The local angles um, help figure out how to connect to something going on on campus or on your, your specific, in your town. Um, in your state. And there are a lot of ways where you can, instead of doing a local angle, do something completely different, um, something that's going on. Um, for instance, Amazon was coming to Queens at one point, um, and then suddenly it was a big deal. But the first time we taught some of this uh, factory labor social science text, that wasn't happening where I lived. I thought Amazon warehouses had no connection. But I still did an exercise that used um, something that was going on in Seattle. Um, and so sometimes it's not a local angle. Sometimes it's like, look what's happening over here. Um, but how do you connect it to something that you've been paying attention to? Sometimes that's the way to do it. Um, then if there's supplemental, supplementary reading, that might help. Uh, so for me, this is always if I'm teaching a humanities thing, what uh, social science texts are helping me teach this. And if I'm teaching a social science text, you know, what's a poem that does something similar. So I figure out other ways to introduce additional genres. In the case of the Thucydides example, of course, we had lots of journalism as the example of other texts and genres. Um, and then I come up with a fictional situation. So what's the situation? Are they uh, people at a workplace? You know, um, and you saw this with Amanda's presentation a little bit. Um, you know, you're suddenly a lawyer and you have to defend a character in a book. Uh, Daisy, Buchanan, <laughs> Daisy Buchanan works at uh, as a secretary. You know, put her in a workplace. Put her in a student group. Put her in something that. Um, has a structure for some kind of writing. What kinds of writing would somebody do in that situation? And how can you make that an assignment? Um, I know when I taught uh, at, at UT, um, a lot of our fictional scenarios were right to your congressperson. And I know your house bill sort of forbids anything like that. So that's fine. And that's why fictional scenarios can get you out of some of those quandaries. Um, make it up, it still can be useful. Um, and finally, what genres of writing are, um, is this project going to expose the student to so that they will be reading different genres? And then what kinds of genres do you want them to write? And there can be collaborative components, there can be individual components, maybe they're the same as my uh, whole composition class, maybe they're different. And how do they, um, again, inform each other so that what we do in class as a group helps them think when they're on their own.